Hey everyone, this is Nathan Hale, and you're watching Disney Channel. Alright, let's cut that nonsense. Welcome to Hale, everyone. So, it is April right now. Yeah, April. My logic behind this video is that quarantine kind of sucks, and it's time that we talk about some movies that we all love. So today I'm going to talk about my 10 favorite Christmas movies. I made this same video about two years ago on my channel, and I feel like my list has changed a lot. And so today I put a lot of thought into this list, and since that last video I've watched a few more Christmas movies, and my opinion has changed on a few Christmas movies as well. There are some Christmas movies out there that I definitely recognize as great Christmas movies, and I actually really like them. However, they don't make this list mostly because Christmas movies are different than any other kind of movies. These are movies that I watch once a year, sometimes several years in a row. And so for me, watching a Christmas movie just one time, it would have to be a really good Christmas movie to just automatically make my top 10 list. Because a lot of these movies are nostalgic for me and they hold a special place in my heart. In fact, every movie you see on this list, I think except for one, uh, I've seen at least five times. Now before I get started, here are a few honorable mentions of my favorite Christmas movies. These are movies that didn't make the list because either I haven't seen them enough times or I just simply like the top 10 movies more. A Christmas Story. Klaus, Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey, no I did not make that up, it's a real thing, Joyex Noel, The Bishop's Wife, Grumpy Old Men, and The Shop Around the Corner. Let's start off the list with number 10. It goes to the Santa Claus trilogy. It's only the Santa Claus 1 and 2 that I enjoy from this, the third one kind of sucks, but I'm kind of a completist so I feel like I should include the third one. No, no, we're going to take the third one out. Scratch that. Number 10 goes to the Santa Claus 1 and 2. Also, funny story. I only realized while preparing for this video that it's called the Santa Claus because the clause is written that he has to become Santa Claus. I always thought that the Santa Claus, it was talking about the character and that his last name just ended with an E. Nope. Santa Claus's name doesn't have an E at the end of clause. Uh, the word clause does, like an agreement. Um, so... That was a revelation to me. A lot of people think the second movie is bad, and I will definitely agree that it's not the best movie out there. Not even the best Christmas movie, but I saw this movie in theaters. It's a movie that's very nostalgic for me. I caught bits and pieces of it on TV this last Christmas, and I just felt so happy inside. Like, I was so happy to be watching this cheesy movie from early 2000s. And then the first movie, The Santa Claus, is just hilarious. Even to this day, I feel like there are more things I laugh at than I did as a kid. I will say that it's a little dated with some of the special effects. Uh, it makes it a little entertaining to watch it today, but I still just love Tim Allen in the leading role. I find him hilarious and the story is just really funny as well. Number nine goes to the original Miracle on 34th Street. This is the one with Edmund Gwen and as the leading role, the one who plays the Macy's Santa Claus, uh, Chris Kringle, and he's one of the big reasons I love this movie so much. He just brings such a warm presence onto the screen. I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, this dude could totally be Santa Claus. He's great. Now, this is the one movie on this list that I haven't seen more than five times. In fact, I've only seen it twice. I saw it for the first time probably two years ago, and then I watched it again this last Christmas season, and... I loved it. Number eight is kind of breaking some rules. It's not technically a movie. It's more of a TV program, but I'm going to say it anyways because it definitely deserves a spot on this list. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Come on. It's just so great. And you can definitely depend on this feature to uh, focus on the true meaning of Christmas because it has such a great narration of the true meaning of Christmas. Plus the music from this uh, feature is iconic and it really hits on every Christmas theme. Number seven goes to the Polar Express. I just want you to think of Josh Groban's beautiful song, Believe, playing as snow is falling in a peaceful, quiet town, nighttime. Ah, it's one of my favorite settings in the world. If there's a Christmas movie out there that hits best on believing in Santa Claus and believing in the Christmas spirit, I would honestly probably say it's it's the Polar Express. Like any time I see snow at night falling, um, I instantly just think of the beautiful score from this movie or I think of the song Believe by Josh Groban. It's not a movie that I necessarily watch every year, but when I do watch it, I'm always pleased and I always definitely get into the Christmas mood. Now, I think it's safe to say that six through one are all movies that I watch every year in the Christmas season. Number six goes to Elf. This movie is just so iconic 
It is my favorite Will Ferrell movie, and every time I watch it, I laugh at the jokes. Even though I know what jokes are coming, I laugh every year when I'm watching this movie. The ending is a little corny with uh, the whole, like, the town New York singing to try to get Santa's sleigh to start working. That's a little corny, but, I mean, look at what movie we're watching. I mean, it... it <laughs> That corny ending is okay to me. I feel like every time I wave my hands around, I'm like Carmen from the Spy Kids 3D trailer. Number five is the iconic family Christmas movie. Not family in the way that it's family friendly, but family in the way that there's a lot of family in it. And that is, of course, Christmas Vacation. I love this movie. And I love the iconic opening animation where Santa Claus is trying to deliver gifts and they're singing the Christmas Vacation song. One little gripe, that song is not on Spotify and it really annoys me. They do have one version, but it's definitely not the same singer as it is in the movies. But anyways, this movie is hilarious. It's probably my favorite Chevy Chase movie, either that or The Three Amigos. And all the family characters are so hilarious as well. They each have their own specific personalities and they just make you laugh when they're on screen. Number four is also kind of breaking the rules. We're pulling another Charlie Brown's Christmas here and it goes to Mr. Kruger's Christmas. Mr. Kruger's Christmas is a 25, 30 minute short that was released by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, starring Jimmy Stewart. I believe Jimmy Stewart agreed to do it because it would give him the opportunity to conduct the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, who today they're actually known by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. And so he agreed to do it, but the story is really just special to me. It's like Charlie Brown's Christmas, where it hits on all the themes of Christmas time. You follow this man, uh, Willie Krueger, who is spending Christmas Eve all alone. It's just him and his cat, George, which I think the cat is named George after George Bailey from It's Wonderful Life. A group of carolers come by and change his evening. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it at that. But it really gets me in the Christmas mood. And it's so easy to watch. If you're a Jimmy Stewart fan or if you're a fan of Christmas, then watch it. It's like half an hour. Number three goes to Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. I feel like the producers of Home Alone were in a meeting one day and they realized how successful Home Alone was and one of them pitched the idea, hey guys, let's do the exact same movie, but this time Kevin's gonna be lost in New York City. Oh, okay, so like, what should we call this one? Should it just be Home Alone 2? No, no, Home Alone 2 is a little bit too cliche. How about we really get our point across that he's lost in New York? Let's call it Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. You are brilliant. Uh, this is an amazing sequel. It's literally like the first movie, but like I said, it's just in New York City. I will say though that I find this one more quotable than the first one. There are a lot of valuable quotes in this movie. It's also really fun seeing New York City uh, in 1992, especially pre 9-11 attacks. It's cool to see Kevin on the Twin Towers. I love the ridiculous far-fetched traps in this movie. They are even crazier than the first movie. And as I'm watching it, I can't help but think after every trap happens, how is he not dead? No, but for real, let's just uh, look at how similar this movie is to the first one. Kevin is alone, once again, of course. Just like in the first one with the creepy old neighbor, there's also a creepy new figure in this one, and it's the bird lady. He runs into the two same bandits, gives them the same traps. The movie starts with him messing off, but then the movie ends with him realizing the true meaning of Christmas. And there are a few cheesy scenes here and there. I want to go home! Mom, where are you? You know that scene where he's like in the horse carriage hiding from the sticky bandits? Number two goes to the first Home Alone movie. And as much as I love Lost in New York, I mean, this one hits home for me. This one wins for me. I, I mentioned that I, I watch the entries number six through number one on this list every year. If for some reason I miss any of the movies, I make sure that Home Alone's at least one of them that I catch every year. Kevin is seriously one of my favorite movie characters of all time. He is a genius. He is so funny and witty. He owns the movie. He's great in it. And plus there's the iconic John Williams score. Somewhere in my memory, oh, I love Home Alone. Also, if you guys are fans of Home Alone as well, there's a TV series on Netflix right now called The Movies That Made Us, and they feature an episode all about the making of Home Alone. I learned so much about the making of Home Alone, and if you like Home Alone, then I highly recommend you watch that. It's just on Netflix, it's like 45 minutes long, definitely worth your time. And number one goes to It's a Wonderful Life. Not only is It's a Wonderful Life my number one Christmas movie, but it is literally my number one movie of all time. This movie means so much to me, and I actually don't want to talk about it too much in this video because I plan on releasing a video soon about why It's a Wonderful Life is my favorite movie of all time. But in short, I will just say I love the way I feel when I'm watching this movie, and 
I don't know. What do you say about your favorite movie of all time? I love every second of it. It's it's amazing. But that video of It's a Wonderful Life will explain more of my thoughts on it. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And hit up that comment section with your favorite Christmas movies. I'm dying to know. Let's get a little bit of Christmas in our lives. Go watch a Christmas movie. I'll see you in the next video.